this video I just want to quickly get across an important conceptual point about audio regions in particular. So regions are these blocks, these building blocks of your arrangements, and when you record audio or MIDI onto a track, you'll end up with coloured blocks. For audio by default they're coloured blue, while for MIDI they're coloured green. So regions can be moved within tracks or between tracks by clicking and dragging. But note that for audio tracks in particular, they can only play one region at a time. In fact, I'm going to get rid of this software instrument track because I'm going to focus specifically on audio regions here. So if I overlap this drum break with this guitar chord, you'll see that the drum loop gets cut off. If you want to play two audio regions simultaneously, you'll have to create a new track. But before we get on to further manipulating regions, there's another important point I want to get over. It's important to realize that an audio region is not the same thing as an audio file. A region is simply a reference to an audio file which lives on your hard disk. If I copy a region by holding ALT and dragging it, I'm not creating a copy of that file on my hard disk, I'm only creating another reference to the same audio file. And that can be important when we start to edit audio in Logic's sample editor. The sample editor allows you to edit audio files in a destructive way. That means that, unlike most of the operations you can do in Logic, you're actually changing the content of an audio file on your hard disk. So to better explain what I mean, I'm going to do the same task in two different ways. Let's imagine I'm happy with the drum loop I've got, except I want to cut off the last bar or so. First I'll do it in a non-destructive way. I can simply drag the right-hand edge of the region back until that last bar is cut off. Or, if I undo that, I could have used the scissors tool to slice it off, which is essentially the same thing. Now when I hit play, I won't hear that last bar. But notice that in the copied version of my region, the last chord, uh, last bar rather, is still visible. Also the operation I've just done here is reversible. If I want to get that last bar back, I can just drag it out again. Let's do the same thing in a destructive way. I'm going to edit the audio file itself rather than the reference to that file. So I'll double click the audio file to bring up the sample editor. And I'll select part of the audio file and I'm going to perform the silence function on it. Notice that the region in the arrange page remains the same length but that this last section has disappeared and crucially in the copied region the last bar has disappeared as well. That's because I edited the audio file rather than the references to that file. Imagine if this region was a loop that I used a lot of times in my song. If I'd only wanted to remove that chord, uh, that bar, sorry, in one part of the song, but I did it using the sample editor, I probably would have accidentally changed every region which referenced that audio file, which would probably ru ruin my song. Of course there's an undo function in the sample editor, but sometimes by the time you realize you've made this mistake it can be hard to get back to where you were before. So for this reason most people avoid destructive edits in the sample editor wherever possible. However there are some operations which can only be done in the sample editor, like reversing an audio file, which is one of my favorite effects. So how can we get around this destructive problem? If I want to reverse only one of these regions, I'll have to make a copy of the audio file on my hard disk and reverse only the copy, leaving the original version intact. So let's do that. I'll select the region I want to edit and I'll look in the audio drop down menu or I could right click on the region itself. Either way you get the same options and I'm going to convert region to new audio file. So I'll be prompted to choose a new name for my 
audio file. And now ed any edits I make to this audio will apply to this region only, because this is the only region that references my new audio file. So let's reverse the sound. Sounds like this. Good, and as you can see, the other region remains as it was. So it might be some time until this distinction between regions and audio files becomes important to you. After all, many if not most of the operations can be done non-destructively. But I thought it was important to warn you about this in case you accidentally destroyed a good performance or take.